Hey guys, what's up? Been long time. So let us discuss today the isometric system normal class. I am planning to start a series on the crystallography, but I will be first discussing with you normal class, and only then later we shall be going ahead with the other classes. So today we have the isometric system, also known as the cubic system. So the isometric system can also be called as the cubic system and I am sure you all are aware of the uh, details about the cubic system. Let us look about it. So in a cubic system, if we talk about the axis of cubic system, so it has got three axes which are equal in size so if we draw the axis so the a b and c all the three axes are equal in size to each other and therefore we name them as a1 a2 and a3 and of course the angles between the axes alpha beta and gamma are 90 degree so it is uh, you know they are perpendicular to each other cubic system then the tetragonal system and the orthorhombic system these three systems they have one thing in common that their axes are perpendicular to each other and therefore the, the three constitute of what we call as the orthogonal systems you should remember this if you get a, a multiple choice question that which of the following uh, following systems constitutes the orthogonal system it has to be these three all right so the cubic system it has three symmetry classes the normal class which we are discussing right now it is also called as galena type or hexoctahedral type then we have the diploidal class called as the pyrite type and the third one is hexa tetrahedral class also known as a tetrahedrite type <coughs> sorry the normal class of the cubic system it shows the highest degree of symmetry of all the crystal classes of isometric system now if we say highest degree of symmetry what do we mean by that let us consider a cube a cube in the normal class of the cubic system can be defined as a crystal form which shows the maximum elements of symmetry so you should remember that a cube it shows maximum elements of symmetry so the forms in this they are cube octahedron dodecahedron tetrahexahedron trisoctahedron trapezohedron and hexoctahedron so let us discuss them one by one first uh, first uh, form is cube so if we look at cube cube has six square faces we all know that now it has nine planes of symmetry what are they so if we look at the planes of symmetry of cube sorry the planes of symmetry are cube are total nine out of which we have six axial sorry three axial and six diagonal so what does this mean six uh, three axial and uh, six diagonal three axial and six diagonal so let us have a look at it so let us say it has six uh, square faces so the three axial so let us this is uh, approximation of a cube so the three axial will be this way one we cut it along the c axis other we cut it along the b axis and the third one we cut it along the a axis so we get the three axial faces but when we have to talk about the diagonal faces or uh, the uh, diagonal planes of symmetry so how are we going to do it so count the number of edges okay let me draw another cube for you count the number of edges in the cube Alright, 
So let us now look for the diagonal planes of symmetry. So if we cut it along this way, so this is one plane, understood? Then next would be from this to this, got it? So we got two uh, diagonal plane. Then the other would be from this to this, from here to here, here to here, and similarly from here, here to here, here. Now, so that's what I uh, I was saying that if we count the edges, so how many edges do we have? Okay, so we have. Is, uh, when we are connecting these you know diagonal points we get six diagonal planes all right so when we add it up we have total nine planes of symmetry okay now there are 13 axes of symmetry so when these 13 axes of symmetry are counted they will be three axes of fourfold four axes of threefold and six axis of twofold symmetry. Let us again look at how these can be dealt with. So, when we are talking about the fourfold axis of symmetry, so definitely if we rotate a cube along these three axes, so you hold here and here, this will be one axis. So, once you rotate it, you will get each face coming once. Similarly, if you hold here along the B axis, you will be getting each face coming once and similarly along A axis. So, all the three axes, they give us the fourfold symmetry. But when we have to uh, talk about the uh, axis of threefold, then how do we hold it? Once we are looking at the axis of uh, threefold, then you have to hold the cube along its solid angles this and this so when we hold a cube along its solid angles now if you count how many solid angles are there there are 12 solid angles so out of the 12 solid angles if you divide 12 by 3 we get 4 so this then this and this this and this this and this okay so along the threefold axis of symmetry once you rotate it you will be getting each face you know, coming three times and when you talk about the twofold axis of symmetry again you have to hold it along the edges this edge and this edge so we have 12 divided by 2 is 6 so we get six twofold axis of symmetry so in all we have total 13 axis of symmetry each face is parallel to an axial plane of symmetry I just explained. Now, when we talk about this uh, cube, then the Miller indices for this will be 100. Why 100? If you look at this face, let us take one face. This is just one face of uh, cube. So, it intersects the A axis. We have one at the back also and then this is the C axis and this is the B axis. So we can see here that the front face is intersecting only one axis that is A axis and it is running parallel to B and C. Therefore, the uh, if you look at the V's parameters, it would be it would be 1 so uh, it will be sorry it will be 1 a infinity b infinity c so one once we convert it to miller indices it will be 1 upon 1 1 upon infinity 1 upon infinity so what do we get we get 1 0 0 that is this. So, the best examples for 
cube face is fluoride, galena, pyrite, etc. I hope you understood. It's very simple. So remember, in crystal systems other than isometric, we will call such faces as pinacoid faces. But in cube, we simply uh, in cubic system, we call it cube, not pinacoid, because here you cannot decide. Uh, is it the basal pinacoid or something other like that because here the three axes are same similar okay next is octahedron so octahedron as the name suggests it has eight equilateral triangular faces uh, each face intersects all the three axes at equal distance so once it intersects so if let us say this is a b and c and one face it is intersecting uh, all the three axes so it is one three this way and since it is intersecting all the uh, axes at equal distance so it will be simple one 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 examples diamond spinel and gold so if we consider this as a axis this is b axis and this is c axis so this intercept which is being cut by this face it will be same so if we look at the v's parameters it will be 1a 1b 1c and miller and dices will be inverse of it it will be 1 upon 1 1 upon 1 1 upon 1 it will be equal to 1 1 1 since it is a triangular face we understand that it intersects all the three axes at equal distance all right let us look at the dodecahedron the dodecahedron 12 rhomb shaped faces each face intersects two axes at equal distance while it runs parallel to the third axis and therefore it will have uh, the miller indices as we can actually write it as h h o this is a general symbol but since it is intersecting at unit distance we can call it as 1 1 0 because here all the three axes are equal so let us draw a rom face this is c axis this is b axis this is a axis and if we draw the rom face uh, which is running parallel to the uh, b axis then we can draw it this way you can see that this is a this is b and this is c so this face is running parallel to the b so it will be 1 0 1 and similarly if it is running parallel to the c axis it will be 1 1 0 if it is running parallel to a axis it will be 0 1 1 examples are magnetite and sodalite next is tetrahexahedron now tetrahexahedron there is the name suggests it is going to have 24 faces with isosceles triangular faces if you look at this diagram very easy to draw here you have to draw a cube i'll just draw it for you you have to simply draw a cube cube has square faces as the name says it is tetrahexahedron it means take a point and draw four isosceles triangles from each face this way this way two behind and here so if you count it we are going to get the 24 faces now The isosceles triangle faces in this are raised from the surface of a cube and each face is parallel to one of the axis and intersects other two at unit distance in the multiple of the unit. So what does this mean? If you see here, the symbol says 1, 0, 2 or 2, 0, 1. So what does this mean? It means that since these triangles are isosceles, they are not going to intersect at equal distance. Of course, one is running parallel to the other uh, uh, one is one face is running parallel to one of the axis and intersecting two 
but here you have to take care that one axis is getting intersected at unit distance while the other axis may be intersected at either half the unit distance or double the unit distance it's a unit of it's a multiple of uh, the unit so you may have faces like uh, with mirror indices like 0 to 1 2 0 1 or 1 2 0 and like that okay so if you look at this axis which is shown over here it's a very nice diagram so you can see we have 2 a2 we have a1 and a3 so the face which is intersecting this okay 2a2 uh, or this face it will be giving you a Miller indice of 210 now what is happening over here the face the shaded face over here let, let me draw it for you if you see here carefully the shaded face so it is running parallel to C axis the shaded face is running parallel to C or A3 axis. It is intersecting A1 that is A at unit distance while it is intersecting the A2 at half the unit distance. So if we according to this diagram this one over here. So if we uh, try to get the V's parameters for it it will be 1a one by two a two and infinity a three because it is parallel to it. So the Miller indices will be opposite of it. It will be so the Miller indices here would be one by one, one by zero point five and one by infinity. So we will have this as 1, 2, 0, okay. So I hope you understood this. Now imagine that if there was a face which was intersecting A1 at half the unit distance, A2 at unit distance and this at infinity or parallel to it then what will be the Miller indices over here it will be 2 1 0 is it okay so this is how you calculate the Miller indices for faces in tetrahexahedron therefore it has given the general symbol as HKO and example is very common garnet all right the next is tris octahedron also known as trigonal octahedron remember Trigonal tris octahedron means it is having three triangles emanating from each face of an octahedron. So, three faces. Uh, so, it is going to have 24 faces. Tris octahedron, 24 faces. All of them are isosceles triangle. And now, in this case, it is a bit different from the previous one, which is hexa tetrahexahedron. Here, we have the isosceles triangles which are intersecting all the three axes but it is intersecting two axes at unity and third axis at the multiple distance multiple of unity it means that two axes are being intersected at the same same distance while the other one may be either half or double of it and therefore we have this general symbol as hhl hhl and example is diamond if you remember we had another example of diamond. Where was that? Just have a look. Yeah, in octahedron we had we had this example of diamond. So you must uh, remember all these forms in which these minerals they precipitate or they form. So diamond can have an octahedron form or it can have a tris octahedron form. Okay, if it is having a uh, octahedron form its Miller indices will be 1 1 1 while if it is having a tris octahedron form it will be HHL so that they may that may be 2 2 1 or uh, 2 1 2 or 1 2 2 like that okay next is 
trapezohedron also known as icosid tetrahedron as the name suggests trapezo means it has trapezium shaped faces 24 similar faces all are trapezium face and each face cut two axis at equal length while the third axis at the smaller length so if you look at the shaded face in this diagram you can see here that if you project this if you project this face here project this face it is going to intersect a3 at double the unit distance and it is going to intersect a2 at again double the unit distance so you have to realize how we are going to do it so if i extend this face like this so it is cutting it here cutting it here if i extend this with this thing over here it is cutting it here and this is cutting it here so we have 1a1 2a2 and 2a3 this is the these parameters so the miller indices would be 1 upon 1 1 upon 2 1 upon 2 to uh, make it proper multiplied by 2 everywhere we have 2 1 1 okay this is how the miller indices are calculated don't get confused that if it is uh, 2 1 1 it is intersecting a1 at uh, uh, double the unit distance no it is intersecting a1 at unit distance a2 and a3 at double the unit distance okay all right therefore here the uh, general symbol becomes hll examples leucite and analkyne next one is hexoctahedron hexocta means we have six faces coming out from each face of an octahedron that means we are going to have 48 faces and an interesting thing over here is that even though it is a, a isometric system form all the three axes are intersected at unequal length which makes it general symbol as hk look at this shaded diagram over here so we have scalene triangle means scalene triangle is the triangle in which none of the sides are equal to each other so if we project this this face over here so it is cutting a1 at unit distance a2 is being intersected here at uh, one and a half the unit distance and a2 is being intersected at three times the unit distance so according to this diagram the these parameters which we get they are 1a1 3a2 and 3 by 2 a3 so if we go for the miller indices over here we'll get 1 upon 1 1 upon 3 and we get 2 by 3 multiply it everywhere by 3 you will get 3 1 2 so the v's parameter for this phase would be 3 1 2 here you can see that all the three axes are being intersected at unequal length and therefore its general symbol becomes HKL. Now, interestingly, we have example of Garnet over here. And if you remember, which other system we had Garnet? It was the, sorry, which other form? It was the tetrahexahedron. If you compare the two forms, you will see that in tetrahexahedron, there are 24 faces, which are isosceles triangle, while in the hexoctahedron, sorry, while in the hexoctahedron we have 48 faces with the scalene triangle and each face cuts at unequal length in case of tetrahexahedron we had the miller indices as hko while in case of hex uh, hexoctahedron we have the miller indices of hkl so i hope you like this quick lesson on the normal class of uh, isometric system we will cover the normal class of other systems in due course of time do ask me if you have any queries questions and if you wish more such lectures do write in the comment box have an awesome day